Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 21, week three, or end of week three of the January League Code Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. Uh, find the most competitive subsequence. Um, so I do warn you that I do solve these and explain these live as I go through them uh, to go over my thought process. So if it goes a little bit slow, fast forward. Uh, okay, so what does competitive mean? Uh, Okay, more comp if A has a number less than, for example, that's just a weird way of doing it. Well, that's a weird name way of d defining it, maybe? It seems like it is just uh, competitive, just means lexographically earlier. Okay. Um, most of size k. Okay, so th this is just the earliest. Um, so you're given a size k, you, you're given the earliest array. Okay. Uh, or like the lexicographically smallest array. Um, okay. This, there's a lot of reading in this one. Uh, you know, you know, competitive is just such a weird definition. Or it's not a weird definition, but uh, there's already a defined definition. So, okay. Hmm. This one is a little bit tricky for sure. Um, hmm. What ideas do I have, right? So my first idea would be some sort of sliding window, but uh, wait, is it subsequence or sub list or whatever? Okay, so it could be okay. <coughs> hmm. I think. For me, the way that I would think about this, so my, as I said, my first intuition is um, sliding window, but I don't think that's true because um, because the idea is that, okay, you know, given a length of K2 or K4, or whatever, you just kind of, you know, snapshot every one of these, right? But then, you know, that's why I look forward to see if it is uh, a subsequence or sublist. If it's now a subsequence, then it comes to be a little bit more interesting in that there should be a greedy solution. Um, and that is a sort of kind of like digit by digit way of doing it is what I'm thinking about. Um, the greedy is because um, for lack so, you know, we talk about uh, on a stream sometimes numbers or, you know, things in general. And in this case, you can also think about it as a number that is uh, uh, of, you know, K digits, um, even though, you know, each number does, has more than one base. Or more than base ten, uh, it is in fact base ten to the ninth. But what I mean is that um, because it, it, the tiebreaker is early in the sequence, the early, so it is greedy in a way because um, in the first place that they differ, you always try to get the smallest. So that's kind of the idea behind what I want to do. Um, and then there's a couple of ways to do this, and that's basically what I think I'm going to do, uh, which is basically. Um, have a sort of, I don't know how, to, I'm trying to think about the best way to describe it. I could code it up quite quicker than I could uh, explain it in a clean way, to be honest. But basically, for each digit, we just want to try in a brute force kind of way, um, well, brute force, but also want to make sure that we are able to, um, we are able to do it as quickly as possible. Which is that, you know, um, in English, how I would phrase it is, okay, but for the first number, you go, okay, can one be a first number? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, then you make that the first number. If the answer is no, then you go, okay, can two be the first number? And so forth. And then you kind of work your way all the way through in a linear way. Um, and if you do things in a, comp you know, the complexity in a good way, then you should be able to... Um, and yeah, you should be able to do it in a good time, right? And and how do, and then the question is, well, how do you check whether you know how do you <coughs> excuse me? How do you check whether um, you know a number can be satisfied, right? Well, you know that a number could be a digit if um, based on the index. How many numbers are after it, right? Like, if you have 
k numbers left, and and it and using this number, there's k minus one or whatever digits left, then you can use this because at worst, you know, you just take the suffix, right? For example, in here, um, you try okay, let's try two, right? Can two have a length of k k two? Well, yes, because there's two and six, and well, that then you're done, right? Let's say k is equal to three. Well, you try two. Um, well, in that case, then the answer is no, because uh, if 2 is the first digit, we don't have enough digits anymore, so we have to try 3. And then 3 is good, so then we, tr we um, you know, go back to 2 and 6, and then that's good, right? So that's basically the idea that I'm going to, like, some variation of that. And um, so that's basically the greedy way that I'm going to do it. Um, and then after that, it, it becomes, well... An implementation problem in the sense that okay, if you do it naively, it is um, if you do it naively, it is definitely going to be like probably n square time or something like that, and and being seeing that n is ten to the fifth, that's going to be too slow. So my thing is, is that now try to think about a data structure that allow us to. Um, Kind of uh, figuring out the best answer, right? Um, one digit at a time. Um, Cause my initial thing is um, okay. Let's let's kind of go with. I don't have a, an idea right now yet, but we could play around with some implementation so that we can think about visualization. That's, that's the way I think about it. And then kind of with that visualization, I could try to figure out what adjustments I can make uh, you know, to the code to kind of figure out what queries I'm asking. Right? So the first thing I'm going to do is just have a lookup, t uh, lookup hash table that maps a key to a list. So I would have something like, OK. Um, uh, indexes maybe for collections that default index of a list and then now for index x in, oops, x in enumerate nums I will put indexes um, of x append index right okay so this part uh, is straightforward ish But hmm. then the question is, well, how do you get the first digit, right? Um, hmm. Well, okay. I think maybe maybe I, I misspoke about this. So okay, maybe another way of thinking about it, uh, I'm just thinking about it, is that instead of going, you know, we still have the greedy um, invariant where, you know, you have this condition where you have to hold true, but instead of trying to go one digit at a time, and you still, well, okay, you still want to do one digit at a time, but instead of, you know, creating this lookup table that we have here, we can maybe just slowly introduce... We we can slowly introduce things into a heap. Oops, don't want to look at it. We could slowly introduce things into a heap to do it in n log n. Um, and what I mean by that is, okay, say k is equal to four, right? That means that with the first digit, you know that all these digits are eligible, and then we just take the smallest and the earliest one, of course. Um, and then we decrement k is equal to three. So let me just actually write it out. I don't know why I'm so lazy today, but yeah. So then now here we we would consider these. Uh, the prefix into the, in a heap or something like that so that we could get the min and the index and sort it by that. Um, and then after taking the 2, because, well, 2 is the smallest number, uh, k is equal to 3. So then now these numbers are up for, you know, consideration, which we take this 3 and, and so on. And I think that should be good. And this is n log n. I don't know whether there is a way for me to easily... Um, uh, 
easily do in linear time, but but I would say in a competitive uh, situation, n log n is going to be fast enough, and I'm going to at least implement this. So hopefully this um, is a good idea for you to also start implementing as well. Uh, one thing that I sometimes say is that um, even if you didn't know the answer or you didn't know how to implement it, um, once someone or well, or even if you don't have the, uh, the algorithm in general, if someone tells you the algorithm, you should, you know, have an idea or maybe work out the details so that you can implement yourself just for practice as well. Um, okay, but yeah, so basically we have a sort of a sliding heap type thing where uh, we put into the heap n minus k elements, and then we put in one element at a time, and I think that should be good enough. Uh, let's do that. Okay, so we have a heap. Let's go to this thing. Um, <clears throat> Let's start with how do I oh so in size you go to so n is equal to length of the nums and we want to put um yeah four do 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 is equal to n minus k we want to put uh hip hit up hip push uh num sub oh I guess I need to index it. And we also want to, if two numbers are the same, we want to type it by the index. Um, this way, uh, we can also just keep track of it, right? And then now, um, how do I want to do this? So now we set index is equal to n minus k. Yeah. Well, after we after we do some uh, loops, we um, yeah, so, okay, let's just have answers equal to do, do. So for in, um, in K, because we want K of these, uh, I think this is actually K bar at the end. In other languages, the index would you go to, like if you have a real for loop instead of a for each loop, and I, I this thing has bit me in the past, that's why I want to be clear. Um, so now we want to actually make the index n minus k at the very end um, to kind of, I don't know, at least let me think about it in a traditional way. But yeah, for, for here, for each loop, we get the minimum element from the heap. So heap, heap, heap of zero is equal to the, uh, let's just say x and the index. Oh, we used index, so that's not great. Um, let's just do, um, hmm. Last index maybe, yeah. Let's just go like that. Um, and yeah, last C index is equal to negative one, say. Um, and hmm, okay, so then we do something like while uh, heap of zero of uh, the first element. So this is the last index. Well, this is less than or wait. yeah, if it's less than last seen index, we pop. Um, the reason why we do this is because basically here, for example, uh, you know, in our example, let's say we have a three here, and at some point we use this three up. Well, after we use this three up, um, we can no longer use any of these previous numbers. So we want, just want to make sure we get rid of it. Yeah. And then we might have to keep on... Yeah, and that should be good. I Maybe we have some off by one somewhere, but I think this should be roughly right. I mean, this is a pop. Um, otherwise, uh, when this is done, we get the x in the last index. Uh, last seen index is equal to last index. The answer we append x, and that's pretty much it. Um, except for we have to push um, num sub index index and then index increment by one. Oops. Someone like that. Um, let's play around with this. See if this gives us uh, something reasonable. I think the idea is roughly right. Uh, oh yeah, I always forget the syntax in uh, Python. Because uh, really, there should be a, uh, a heap object, but I I always forget the syntax. Uh, hmm, that's not great. Unless I'm just off by one, right? I'm probably off by one, and it, it didn't go. Uh, let's see, n minus k. 
So 4 minus 2, it goes to 2. So it's just 0 and 1. So this actually should be a plus 1. Um, now I might yeah, push too much. Um, because this may be done afterwards. Uh, so this is just the last one. Uh, if index is less than n, let me do this. Um, Hmm. Oh, this should we should pop as well. Uh, well, we could either pop here or we could just set this here. So uh, yeah, a lot of silly mistakes to be honest. Uh, but I'm a little bit tired today. That's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. Let's test the other one. Uh, oops. Oops. And also, easily we can just change it to uh, uh, more numbers. Uh, and it's easy to verify the answers in this case. Uh, this looks okay. I just I do want to test a little bit more because it feels like a problem I can really easily make silly mistakes on. Uh, so yeah, and if this looks good, I'll, I'll give it a go. <coughs> uh, okay, so it looks good. Let's let's give it a submit. Cool. Uh, yeah. So what is the complexity here? Well, for each number, we push it onto the heap once, and then we pop it off the heap at most once. So that means that for each um, item, it's going to take... Um, I mean, I, well, okay, all of n in the worst... Uh, uh, sorry, log n in the worst case. Um, you, could, you could say maybe it's log of n minus k. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference per se because the heap has n minus k elements um, but I don't think it matters that much to be honest uh, yeah you could say it's n log n minus k um, and that's pretty much the complexity uh, in terms of space obviously it's linear because well you know that's the size of the output and also just the size of the heap uh, I guess the size of the heap is n minus k um, and then the size of the output is k, so it's actually perfectly linear. Um, yeah, uh, in terms of space, even though the, hmm, that's actually kind of cute. But uh, but yeah, that's all I have. Um, let's actually go for this one. I don't know if there's a better solution, to be honest. I feel like there may be. Uh, so let's take a look at the hint, and let's go. Uh, let's drag increment goes to left and the right. That's what I did. Uh, okay, I don't have to mon uh, do whatever for the solution. So let's see if there's a discuss real quick. Uh, is there a linear time solution? I actually don't know. Now I'm curious. So we can learn together. Uh, one past that. I, I thought there may be a stack solution, but I didn't really want to think about it. Oh, that makes sense. Um, oops, what did I click on? I actually, as long as you say my... Because um, I, I, I do this a lot where... Um, and I don't like using mono stack, um, even though it is something that we think about. Um, or maybe even... Mono Q. Yeah, I think you could use a mono Q on this as well. Uh, and the idea is that basically, and you know, I have a video that um, about mono Qs. Um, so yeah, so there, there is a linear time solution. Um, but the idea is that okay, here, you know, we're um, at every time we're looking for the min element, right, from from uh, a Q, and then we have a push, and then we have a pop. Um, until we get the next max. So that's basically the idea, really, um, is that uh, once you have that abstract data type, and I, like as I said, I have a mono Q uh, video to kind of go over it, um, and once you kind of understand the motivation between the max Q, um, which is what I call it because it makes more sense, because in this case, uh, you're getting the min Q, actually. But... But yeah, for, for this problem, you're getting the min Q and, and you can reduce this to linear time and linear space. Um, I definitely recommend doing that one as well. I always forget about the, min, the, the, uh, the mono Q slash min Q. Uh, but to be honest, it is actually, um, the code is very much the same. It's just that, you know, instead of a push to a heap and a pop to the heap, we actually just change it to mono Q. I think it should be a, should be straightforward, but uh, I guess it's a little bit late for me to upsolve it. So 
Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions about this or the mono queue or, or mono stack or whatever. There might be a stack solution as well. But um, but yeah, um, anyway, it was a good farm. Uh, I don't think I've done this, at least not recently. So uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> have a good night. Bye-bye.